Welcome back. This is Anthony Brasella, and today we're solving exponential equations by getting a common base on each side. We've already said an exponential equation is an equation that has a variable in the exponent, thus exponential. And the way we're going to be solving this is by getting a common base. So when we look at this, we want to write this equation with the same big number on each side. Big number being the base. Let me write it a little bigger. And we have to figure out what's that common base. Well, if we look at 81, I bet all of you just from your multiplication table could tell me a way to rewrite 81 is some number to power. Yeah, that's right. 9 squared would give you the 81. So we have 9 squared to the 3x minus 3. Now, what about 729? Can we raise 9 to a power and get 729? Let's see, where's my scratch paper? Right over here. I'm just going to think, okay, we start multiplying 9. 9 times 9 would be 81. 81 times 9, is that 729? Can y'all do that in your head? This is my old-fashioned calculator. 9 times 9 is 81 times another 9, 729. It's one of those reverse notation calculators. So 9 to the 3rd is 729. And did y'all hear that? Someone just asked, could we have used a different base like 3? And the answer is yes. 3 to the 4th would give you an 81. And over here, how many threes would you need to multiply together to get a uh, 729? Uh, no, uh, I think it's six. Three squared to the third, yeah. So you could have multiplied six threes to get 729. So you could use a common base other than nine if you wanted on this. And what would that base, common base be a three? Your numbers are gonna get a little larger then I think I'll just stick with it the way I have it. Now let's write this without the parentheses. You got to distribute. So the exponent on the left is 6x minus 6. The exponent on the right is a 3x plus 6. And now if the bases are equal, the exponents have to be equal. So I'm just dropping the 9's and solving 6x plus minus 6 equals 6x. 6x minus 6 equals 3x plus 6. How will I solve this? Well, just a linear equation. So this is those arrow notation. Hopefully you've gotten accustomed to that. I mean 6x minus 3x. That would be a 3x. And then I'm adding this 6 to both sides. So 3x equals 12. Divide by 3 to get x equals 4. So, let's see. Can I get it all in there? So, on number 9, the solution set is... Now, what about number 10? Well, this is another one, that, one of those that has the E's in it. So, let me write this. I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over E raised to the negative X power equals 1 over e 
to the third raised to the x plus 3 power. Ooh. Well, let's start over here. If you have an e in these problems, e is going to be the common base. So how would I write this with just an e and not that 1 over? It goes back to those properties of logarithms that we stated on early. Let's see. Uh, a to the negative n is 1 over a to the n. So if we have a, if we look at this backwards. If you have a 1 over and you want to write it without the 1 over, make the exponent negative. So this red 1 over is the red negative. So 1 over e to the third, I could just write as e to a power by just making that exponent negative. So we have e to the negative 3 raised to the x plus 3 power equals, on the right hand side, if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, there's not a, it's different from over here because there's not an exponent. Eh, sure there's an exponent. You can imagine that there's a 1 right there. So we would just write this as e Get rid of that 1 over, make the exponent negative. And now, go ahead and multiply to get rid of the parentheses. We're going to have it written in the form E equals E with no parentheses. So we'll then be able to draw the exponents. Negative 1 times negative X, that's just a positive X. Over here, we got to distribute over addition. Negative 3x minus 9. So, move this up a little. So, drop the e's and you're solving x equals negative 3x minus 9. Just a linear equation. So, add 3x. 1x plus 3x is 4x. Divide by 4. Ooh. Can y'all see it out there? It's getting sort of low. A negative 9 over 4. Any questions on that? Going sort of quickly. Are y'all caught up? Now, let's see, number 11, this is the last one we'll do today, it has a radical in it, a square root in fact. So, let me write it out color coding it. We have a square root of 2 raised to the x plus 3 power equals, the base here is an 8 raised to the x power. Well, what's our common base going to be? We're going to try to write both sides with the same number, same big number, same base, uh, right, 2. So, we're going to try to write both sides with a big 2. Don't say 4. How do I write 8 is 2 to the power. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 cubed would give you the 8. Now, here's something that we're going to be doing an awful lot. We're going to be rewriting radicals as fractional exponents. The definition of a fractional exponent. Right here, this rule 6. We're looking at it in reverse, which is saying a square root would be a one-half exponent, a cube root a one-third exponent, a fourth root a one-fourth exponent. We're going to be doing stuff like that very frequently throughout this stuff 
you see a radical. Now, if you're thinking, remember square roots, you may not write the little two there, but you sure say it when you say square root. Okay, so a square root you'll write as a one-half exponent, a cube root of one-third exponent, a fourth root of one-fourth exponent. So, back to this problem. This red square root is going to be a red one-half exponent. Hmm. Now, once you have it written like that, write it without the parentheses. Normally, you know, I distribute the one I would distribute here, but you're going to get some fractions, and maybe right now I'm going to multiply 3 times x. This is a 3x. And over here, I'm just going to write it like this, just because it'll make it a little bit easier to solve it. I'm not actually going to distribute that one half. I'm just going to write it like that. And then drop the big twos. So here's the equation I'm solving. One half times x plus three equals three x. Why did I not distribute the two the one half? Well right now you can easily get rid of this one half by multiplying both sides by two. So multiplying both sides by two and on the left, I just have x plus 3. And on the right, 6x. So how would I go about solving that for... Um, let's see, is there anybody can get it all on this? Okay. okay, so I'm solving x plus 3 for 6x. Eh, just move it up a little. I think what I'm going to do is just subtract 1x from both sides. So we just have a 3 equals 5x. Divide both sides by what? 5. Sometimes students will say 3, and no, you're not dividing by 3. You try to get the x by itself. So divide both sides by 5. So where is that equation? Square root of, x, of 2 raised to the x plus 3 equals 8x. The solution set there would be 3 over 5. Mm. Ooh, wait, let me see. We're sort of running out of room here. So, I think we'll call it quits over solving exponential equations with a common base today and uh, next time we're going to be solving or uh, working with ooh. next time we'll be working with logarithms with a fine logarithm for the first time okay so uh, take care and I'll see you next class period